How did you learn to shift your identity to say, okay, this path that I've been on for eight years, mm. I'm going to let go of and go all in on this other thing that I've been doing on the side. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Mate, that conversation with you changed my life. The, before that conversation, I had been feeling a lot of money anxiety and security anxiety about, about my business and about my YouTube channel. And even though it was making like a load of money at the time, I thought to myself, okay, it's making money right now, but it's, it's sort of like, I don't know, being an actor or being a, being an athlete or something. Like you've got maybe a year or two or three to really make money. And then at that point you become a husband and no one cares about you anymore. And like, you're sort of washed up and irrelevant and all of those fears were going, going on inside me. And so I had this real risk aversion, this real fear of like, what if, I, you know, if I leave medicine and go all in this YouTube stuff and it doesn't work out, what if I'll end up broken, homeless and alone and destitute? And I just had this narrative running in my mind that there's something about medicine that gives you security and I need a job for security. And I had never really questioned that until you were questioning me about it. <laughs> and what you asked me, you were like, you know, we were, we were actually just running the numbers. You were asking me, how much are you earning in medicine? And I was like 40 grand a year. You were asking, okay, and then when you, when, you, when you fully qualify, how much will you be earning? And in the UK, it's a, a, very different to the US. In the UK, the cons a consultant would earn 100 grand, uh -huh. 100,000 pounds, $120,000, something to that effect. That's like full-time, that's like full -time an doing, expert. Fully expert. And if in your 50s, you're doing private practice and you're really good, then maybe it goes up to 300, 400. Right. Whereas in the US, it's very different. It's a different sort of, different mm -hmm. sort of equation. And I was like, how much are you making a month right now on YouTube? And I think you were like, oh, over 50 grand a month. At yeah, the time. it was something absurd more than like that. that. Yeah. I was like, wait, so monthly you're making more than in a whole year if you busted your butt yeah. as a doctor in medicine. <laughs> and this is just a side thing. And you were like, yeah, and oh, like, I never thought about that. And what, one of the things I find so interesting, like I've listened to that conversation back again so many times, is that I think a lot of us have these stories about money and about security and the need for certainty. Mm. A lot of these stories that are actually completely disjointed from what the reality actually is. The reality was I was making more money in a month than I was in a whole year working as a doctor. But in, in, in terms of how I felt about money and felt about security and certainty, I didn't feel that confident about it. Mm. And what it took was an outside perspective, you know, someone with a lot of love and a lot of care to just sort of challenge me on that for me to realize, wait a minute, actually the story I've told myself, which is that, oh, I, I have all this insecurity around money. It's actually a bit of a bull story. And it, would, it took you challenging me to say, mm. look, let's say you lost everything. Let's say no one knew who you were, but you still had all the skills that you've got. How long would it take you to make a hundred grand? And I think I said something like, oh, I can do it within two years. You were like, oh, you can do it within three or six months. And I was like, that's probably true. Because in the course of building a YouTube channel, it's not just about the fact that, I don't know, I've got followers on the internet. Anytime anyone does anything entrepreneurial, you just build a ton of skills mm. in that thing. And so even if it doesn't work out, worst case scenario, you just get another job. And now you have all these skills from entrepreneurship. If it doesn't work out, best case scenario, you just start something else and you use the skills that you've already developed through the mm -hmm. process. And that was something that you kind of challenged me on. I was like, like before that conversation, I was so fearful about the money thing, about losing it all, about what if all of this comes crumbling down. Since that conversation, I have, I still feel weird about money. I think it's not a, a it's mm -hmm. like, a, 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 I don't know, a long-term thing that's yeah. hard for one conversation to change. But speaking to so many people, there's, there's so many people who've, who've, who I've met in real life and who've emailed me, having listened to that conversation that we had two and a half years ago, and something in that conversation resonated with them as well. Mm. Like even though it is, maybe they're not a YouTuber and maybe they're not making 10 times as much as they are from their side hustle as they are from their day job, I think everyone can relate to this idea of feeling insecure about money. Like I don't quite have enough and I'm, I, oh, I, sh I, should stick at, I, I should stick at my job a bit longer because what if I get that next raise? What if I get that next promotion? Because then I'll feel safe. And I've spoken to people who are decamillionaires who also feel unsafe about money. Mm. So there's like some kind of emotion thing here that's sure. like disjointed from reality. And I, I just... Where do you think that came from, that fear of money for you originally? Yeah. Because you're also making it. It's not, you weren't afraid of making it because you were making it, yeah. right? On the side. You were making more in a month than you were in a year. Mm. But was it a fear of, I don't want to lose this? Was it something conditioned you early on that you saw that you were like, ah, oh, this is a scary yeah. thing? I think it was a scarcity mindset growing up. I think because, you know, my, my mom is a single mom, raised me and my brother and her mom, like kind of single-handedly, we moved countries. As, yeah. you know, immigrant families always have a bit of a, 
scarcity approach about money that, hey, you know, money's this thing we have to hold on to. It doesn't grow on trees. You've got to work hard for it. You've got to save and all this kind of stuff. And so that was, that was an attitude that really served me because it gave me my entrepreneurial spirit of like wanting to make the money. But once I got there, there was a lot of this fear of losing it. As you said, a lot of this scarcity that like, yeah, money doesn't grow on trees. I got very lucky with this YouTube thing. What if it was just luck? What if, I don't know, a year from now, people stop following me anymore for whatever reason, because I become irrelevant. Like, oh my goodness, what if, what if I no longer make all this money and uh, uh, all of this stuff around that, that uh, at least I've, at, at least I could be a doctor. At least that's wow. a way that I can have value and make some money and support my family and, sure. and things like that. So what was your identity like um, before YouTube? And then what was your identity like as you started making money on the side on YouTube while you were also full-time as a doctor? Yeah. So I think before, before YouTube, I think when I was growing up, my identity was very tied to academic success because I was really good in school and I got good grades. In. But I realized after a few, uh, after a sort of my teenage years of doing that, that I kind of wanted my identity to be different. So even in my school years, I was trying to make money on the side, trying to build businesses, trying to make money on the internet, passive income, all that crap. Then when I got to university and medical school, suddenly I did no, I no longer had the identity of being really good in school because everyone around me was really good in school and I was bang average. I was wow. like middle of the class. I was like, oh, like, <laughs> wow, okay. I no longer have that thing that's propping up my self-worth, the fact that I got really good grades. And so I think as we all do, I tried to find other ways of diversifying my identity. I, you know, started a business that I finally succeeded. And then I was like, oh, cool. You know, I'm, I'm the entrepreneurial guy. I get, you know, all these other, all these other students around me. Some of them are really good at sports. I was never going to be great at sports, but I've, you know, I've got a business. I'm making money. This is good. When I started the YouTube channel, I developed, I got that identity of being a YouTuber. When I became a doctor, I got that identity of being a doctor. But there was something weird about the doctor identity that I clung to for so long, because I think if, if, if someone had asked me, what do I do? I wouldn't have said, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a YouTuber. Like the, I, I would have said, I'm a medical student, I'm a doctor. That was the noun that I was using to describe myself. Mm. I've spoken to people since when people ask, what do you do? Like some people are like, oh, I, I, I enjoy saying that I'm a lawyer because that gives me, you know, people respect that. Mm -hmm. Even the people who work for me now don't like saying they work for a YouTuber because there's something low status about that. They, they prefer to say, oh, I work in marketing or, oh, I work in customer success or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's taken a long time for the, for the people in my team to be actually comfortable with, yeah, I work for a YouTuber because they realize it's actually more interesting. If you say you work in marketing, no one has any follow-up questions. If you say you work for a YouTuber, huh, huh. that's interesting. What type of content? It creates a, a, a more interesting conversation. But I find it so interesting how we're all, how a lot of us are so tied to the identity of the thing that we do for work. And I was so tied to that identity really? of being a doctor. Yeah. And you like had pride in it, it gave you self-worth. Yeah. What was it like when you were thinking about leaving being a doctor and just going all in and being a YouTuber were you scared about how you would perceive your self-worth or how others would perceive your self-worth? I was so scared about how others would perceive it. Really? I was so scared that like, 